So, the small airport. Is it really worth it? Let's find out together. And the answer is no. Bye! Okay, now let's be serious. I have tested several combinations of this airport. I have compared it uh, to vanilla styles and also I've created some mod builds. Want to present to you my findings and we will compare two helicopters and see if it's possible to build a completely isolated setup and what you need to do for it. So let's jump right in. So the defining thing about the new airport is the runway. You have the mud runway on the left side with a mud taxiway and you can use the small parking spot or the mud parking spot. Bigger parking spots will make no sense and will possibly not work. And on the other hand you have the asphalted runway and you can use all kinds of parking spots and all kinds of sizes. But you need to use a tower for this one. So for asphalt you need the tower, for mud you don't need a tower. This becomes quite important and it doesn't matter what kind of buildings you connect to the parking spots. They all work the same way. The only defining factor is if you asphalted it then you need a tower, if not then not. But all other buildings will work with both variants. Now we take a look into the new vehicles which are available and some old ones. So if we go to the eastern side and select here passengers, we have the airport fleet <laughs> and the capacity of these are always not so great. Also the speed is not so super nice. So they all more or less lose against helicopters. The one thing which is great is the western vehicle, which is here the Fokker 27. It is available from very early on in the game, so basically at the start. And we can compare it to the helicopters. So he has a capacity of 52, which nobody else has in the small airplane department. And if we take a look into the helicopter side, Eastern helicopters are the best, we all know it. Mm. We have the Mi-6. And the MI-8 when it comes to transport of people. The MI-6 can transport twice of the people than the MI-8. But the MI-8 has a way smaller engine. So it's more fuel efficient. Let's take the MI-6 for comparison here. Because it should be a fair fight on capacity side. So we have capacity of 52. We have capacity of 47. But the Fokker is way faster. 450 kilometers an hour versus 280 kilometers an hour and he has a way smaller engine uh, 3250 kilowatts versus 8090 kilowatts and assuming that everything works the same in workers and resources <laughs> vehicles do burn fuel per minute so if you have a faster vehicle and the same engine power it will take less fuel for the vehicle to reach its destination because it's not so long on the way. So our Fokker is even more fuel efficient regarding to the speed than the helicopter. And if you add this all up, you get into a factor of the Fokker is more than three times fuel efficient than the helicopter. It's more like five times more fuel efficient, which is a big difference. Where the Fokker does not win anymore is if we change out the loadout. So we can say, okay, this is a cargo plane and we take the best cargo helicopter into consideration. Which is the MI-10. Here you are. Okay. So now we have more or less the same stats for speed and engine power, so the Fokker is more fuel efficient. Again, it was a factor of 3 to 5. But what's more important for me at least is that 
if you look at the amount of steel the Fokker can transport, it's only 4.7 tons. And the MI-10 can transport 13 tons of steel, which is an enormous difference. And also, the Fokker cannot transport any containers or vehicles. And I will come to it later why this can be important. And the MI-10 can transport vehicles. So big plus, and the MI-10 does some things the Fokker cannot do. And it's also way more flexible. And this is why I say, okay, there's no real reason to go on airports. But uh, they are fun, so I'll show you some setups in a minute. Uh, helicopters are more versatile, you can do more things with them, you can take them to fire service or construction service or people transportation service, and you don't need a big runway or something, you need less uh, stuff for the helicopters. But let's take a look to the first setup. So this is a setup where I think the airport makes sense. I will transport the people from the border or from another airport, workers with the plane here. And they will come to the airport and they are set up like this. So load at the border and unload here with the waiting order. The waiting order is quite special here. So they have arrived and uh, they will move out here quick, pretty quick, even though they should wait 12 hours. You see here, now they have left. And they will go out to the local working places. This is uh, because I have allowed people to go there without any other uh, orders. If I disallow this one, if I disallow people going to the different buildings, then they will wait at the passenger terminal and uh, they can be picked up by a bus, for example. Now let's go to the next setup. On this setup, I'm shipping in the people by plane, like before, but I'm also shipping in the materials here to the cargo terminal. And you see here the mixed setup, so I have asphalt parking spots. And one thing here, I have one more plane who wants to land here and want to unload and all the other planes are waiting. <laughs> and they cannot unload because the one plane is there reserving one more space than they have. If I re remove this plane, I only have three planes here. Then the other plane can land, the last cargo plane, and they will start to unload because they have a st free start way, <laughs> which is really weird. But that's like it is. Let's take a look. Here comes the last cargo plane. And now they will move in because they can start again. Just a little specialty which took me some while to figure out. And uh, yeah, have enough cargo terminals for every cargo plane if you want to have a waiting cargo plane unloading. But what about a fully self-sustaining airport setup where you don't provide the fuel via an external source? To do that, we go to the border here. And cut the terror, cut the road. Bye. Okay. Next, we need uh, the following setup. A depot like you see on the bottom there, a fuel station and two vehicle storages like here and here. Next, a helicopter cargo platform, like this one here. And a helicopter parking spot. Okay. You need to deliver here fuel, either by autobelt or by uh, having a distribution office. And now comes the interesting part. So we want a MI-10 cargo helicopter. And I want to have them free here. Bye. And let's set up the forklift connections to one way. So this one goes in and out. And we buy some vehicles. So I want to have the oil tankers. And you can click on the helicopter to see which ones are available to transport. So if you click here, 
you see all the vehicles you can transport and go to oil tanks here and you see all the oil tanks you can take either the biggest one he can transport or the smartest one he can transport <laughs> and the smartest one he can transport is the skd 706 and let's buy four of them okay then you need to give them an order to fill up so you say go to the border go here and fill up with fuel and off you go and his friends also should do the same after they are all full you tell them to go to the storage here as used vehicles and now they can be picked up by the helicopter so we select the helicopter tell them to go here and go to the other side where I have a quite similar setup so we are loading and wait until loaded vehicles and you are unloading and wait until unloading here and you start okay good also need another depot here let's take a look what happens Going back to the untethered helicopter. So he is now without fuel. Ah, we also need power here. <laughs> yeah, this is why this is a little bit complicated. If you power. Okay, now he can refuel. And he will load all the vehicles which are here full. So the left side is always the full vehicles. You see now? He has to load it. So the left side is always the full vehicles. And the other side is the empty vehicles. So you can have a line where you can also say, okay, I want to load and unload vehicles. And at the same time, on the other side, I want to load and unload vehicles. Good. So the helicopter does not need to be touched. And this is why I have chosen two SKDs. Because of the bigger ones, he can only transport one. But on the smaller ones, he can transport two. So he can transport 14 tons of fuel per hop. Whoops. And here we are, unloading our cargo. <laughs> And here they are, you can say, okay, you have a new home, which is this depot. And now you can say, you, go please. Here, unload the fuel and come back to the depot. You can say, okay, you go unload fuel and come back. And he will go unload and comes back. If we do it to the second one, we will dump the fuel here into the building. We can also dump it into the into a fuel tank, which will be a little more sensible. Here's also one waiting. Um, so everything is full, which is fine. But I think you got the point of this system. So you have one tank and you need to transport full oil tanks to your destination, unload them, get them back and transport them back. The kicker is he will always lose its line. So after transporting them here, he has a clean line. What you can do is if you create a line, you can rename the line so it will stay intact and you can reuse it. But this is all super manual work. I don't know if you want to do this, but uh, this is a solution if you want to build on a remote place, uh, untethered heliport and uh, transport everything. It is all a little bit problematic, but this is the solution if you want to have a totally untethered air transport to a very remote location. And like said before, you can also make the whole setup happen with helicopters. You don't need the planes. So the choice is yours. But let's take a look how a modded optimized setup looks in my mind. So this is the optimized setup with mods. Um, I have two runways. 
and they don't lock up. Also, the cargo planes don't lock up, lock up because uh, every cargo plane has its own platform. And the platforms look like this here. So, we have a modded cargo terminal, which is this one. It's really cute. It's the cargo stand. And it only needs minimal amount of materials to be built. So let's take a look. Some of the basic stuff, basically gravel, concrete and asphalt, a couple of working days. So it's really fast and you can plunk in two parking spots to it. You see here the distribution office at work. So if a um, plane comes in, they will unload it and load it to the corresponding storages. Also, this little cargo stand has its own fuel supply. So the airports, uh, their planes get supplied. The only thing you can't do is connect storage to it. Here comes the next plane in and it will be unloaded by the distribution office. You see here, it will also be filled up. <coughs> yes. So this is a very nice setup to have a working cargo terminal and have a working airport for a basic start where you can get your city going somewhere remotely and um, have all the necessary goods except of gravel, asphalt and concrete which needs to be flown by helicopters. There's no way around this one. Okay, and I think that's it. That's all I have to say for the airports. I think it's an exciting topic. It took me way longer than I want to admit. <laughs> there was a lot of work into, put into this, which was fun because it was again triggering out the puzzle game of this game. But also it is work. So if you want to support me and thank me for it, do the YouTube things. And I hope to see you next time. Bye, comrade.